Hi everyone, it's me again. Um, wasn't entirely happy with my, my first video, if I'm honest. I, I think I tried to mingle the, uh, you know, the, 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 the 70s things with the 80s things a bit too much. So I'm, I'm going to back trail a little bit. So I apologise. You might have seen quite a few of these records again. Uh, I did them in my first video, but I'm going to try and try and sort of start again. I think I'll probably do probably split that one into two. I think, and then we'll, we'll see how we get on. Uh, so like last time I was chatting about synth pop uh, a little bit and for me it, it sort of had a sort of a golden age uh, of synth pop and that was at about sort of 1979 to about 1982-83 for my money where uh, there was a lot of like sort of synth pop stuff coming out and it was, it was really quite quite cutting edge at the time it was the first time it had been properly done as a, 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 as a, in pop music really uh, where it was successful, at least. So um, there was a lot of sort of post-punk bands floating about, um, doing bits and bobs, but they weren't really getting anywhere until, like I said on the last video, Gary Newman comes along in Tube Boy Army. He had a massive number one off this album, uh, and he did ever so well. Basically, he, he sort of got the got the whole ball rolling. People realised that you could actually become successful writing uh, electronic uh, pop pop music. And uh, our friends Electric was number one on this. This is 1979. This is a this is a really good record. It's actually quite guitar-y, considering um, he's remembered as as being sort of a computer programmery type musician. This is a, a lot of guitar on that. And then we've got the second album, The Pleasure Principle. He, he, he changed the name just to Gary Newman. He, he ditched the Chibi Army uh, name. Uh, I think this is probably my favourite one he did. I think it's really good. I love the imagery and I love the, I love the sound. It's got my, all my favourite uh, uh, Newman songs from this. And Cars and Metal and um, Complex and Me, you know, uh, fantastic songs. That is a really, really great album if you don't I think this is, that's his best album uh, from his, his first uh, period. Uh, and he had a couple of albums after that. His ne next, the next one was this Telecon, which is, is still a very good record. I, I Die, You Die, that did very well. Um, not, not as good as, as Pleasure Principle, I think. He, he, his, his early stuff, he, he never got better than that. And the one after that, his fourth album, I can't remember what year this was, 1982, I believe. And uh, this is probably his, his last decent-ish album from his, from his first uh, original uh, wave of albums. This had uh, music for chameleons on, which is which is a good record, um, but he's he started losing it a bit by this point. Um, like I said, that opens up the floodgates for a lot of other people. I think for my money, what another album that really got the whole synth pop ball rolling was a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon after this was released was Dare by the Human League. If you remember in my last video, I was chatting about the early Human League albums before um, before they changed to this sort of style because um, originally there was. It was four four men originally. It was the two fellas who formed M17 and um, Phil Oakey and Adrian Wright, I think, uh, remained in the Human League. They split into two bands, and this was the first album uh, when after they got the women in the band after the other two fellas left after Martin Ware and uh, Ian Marsh left. And this is an absolute juggernaut of a synth record. Like uh, that is perfect perfect pop music for my money. Um, yeah, it's a huge singles on that love action. Uh, Don't you want me? Um, really, really clever. It's very ahead of its time. I think he used the first ever Lin Lin drum, the Lin M1 that came into the country. I think they had one of the one of the first albums to use that properly in all the tracks and um, gives it a very distinctive sound. Very good. Very well produced. Not not in Russian Russian. Uh, and as well, uh, in the same studio at the same time that was being made, the other two fellas were making this album, Penthouse and Pavement, Heaven 17. Um, I think this is just as good as Dare, it did, didn't do as well. It's um, regarded quite quite highly now, but I think at the time it wasn't as successful as, as Dare, but by no means that was, that was absolutely massive. But I think this is a, a really underrated record, and if you've never listened to it, um, you should play it. It's a really weird blend between sort of electronic music and... Um, sort of funk, or a lot of funk and disco influence on it as well, but it's got a lot of the old, um, lovely old um, original Human League uh, sound on it, you can hear Ian Marsh brings a lot of that with him, you know, he, he, the darker sort of um, electronic sounds, so that that is a great record, and um, they did eventually get a bit of credit, um, they released um, Luxury Gap, this was their second album, 
at least 1982, and um, they, they had a lot of number ones on there, so a lot of big, big selling singles. Um, Temptation, um, Come Live With Me, what was the other one? Uh, let me go, possibly. I can't remember. Anyway, that had, that had a lot of. Um, they did very well on that. They, they finally got a bit of credit. So they, were, they were a little bit overshadowed by when Dare came out. The Dare seemed to get all the credit, but they did. They did finally make a bit of money on that. So it's got the worst cover I've ever seen as well. If you can see that properly, that is a shocking album cover. That is. A bit, I think I'll forgive them for that. Uh, I'm sorry I've mentioned this one already. Uh, Visage. This was sort of hot after uh, Gary Newman released. Uh, is his first stuff. This this came out very really quickly. This had Fade to Grey on it, which was number one for a long time. Um, I, I did play this album again actually after my last video, and because uh, I said that it it aged a bit and it sounded sounded fairly good still, but I, I think it really has aged quite badly. Uh, if I'm honest, I think Fade to Grey is um, one of the only good tracks on it, and that still sounds like now. That's a, a classic song. Um, and then we've got. Oh, this is interesting. Visage, was a, Visage and Ultrabox and John Fox conundrum I'm going to be talking about now as well. Uh, Midjo was on this record before he was in Ultrabox. This is their, their, their successful album. This is the second generation Ultrabox um, after John Fox left. I'll talk about John Fox in a minute again. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this, this was absolutely massive. This had Vienna on, which was, which was number one for ages and did, it did very well. It's one of the biggest synth, synth pop hits ever, I, I think. Um, it is a great song. This is a, this is a very good album. I can still listen to this now. It's got um, Western Promise and Mr. X on and uh, Sleepwalk. It's got some really good stuff on. That's, that's a good and great record. And it looks fantastic as well. Like That is a, a nice, tidy sleeve. Looks very of its time, that. Someone asked me what that 1981 looks like, I'd say, look at that. Everyone looked like that in 1981. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and like I say, John Fox, who was the original uh, lead singer for Ultra Rocks, but they were, used to be sort of um, an electric punk band almost, uh, sort of, um, sort of post-punk. Um, and it, but he left eventually and he, he started writing his own electronic stuff. This is, this is very sort of Gary Newman-esque. Type stuff and um, Gary Newman cited John Fox as one of his one of his absolute heroes. He, he was a, a big John Fox fan. Um, this is John Fox's 1981 album, uh, Metamatic. Uh, had Underpass on, which was, which was a good single. And I think this this is very very underrated. This is this is just as good as um, anything Gary Newman did uh, for me. Um, very underrated. I'd definitely definitely play that if you like this sort of uh, period of music. Um, an absolute classic, non-stop erotic cabaret uh, by Soft Cell. Uh, this is this is a really really good record. I love this album. I've played it so many times. Uh, unfortunately, the moment Tainted Love, you can't get away from it. It's just everywhere. I think, in fact, I think the other day I saw a busker performing that on an acoustic guitar, which kind of ruined it a little bit for me. Uh, I think it, I think it really works ever so well. It is. Mark Almond is, 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 is such a, uh, a fantastic voice and he's a really, really great, great pers uh, performer, proper character. And I always thought it was strange that Marilyn Manson did that cover of Tainted Love because I always thought Mark Almond was much creepier and, and weird than Marilyn Manson will ever be, so that's, that's a, a, a brilliant record, that. Um, really good. It's very, very dark, very seedy. It's all, it's all, it's all you know, sort of a... Uh, Kind of about sexual deviance, I suppose, the entire album. But it, I really do rate that a lot. That is a, is a fantastic album. Uh, I'm going to talk now about Japan as well. I mentioned Japan before. Uh, I can't remember. They, like, people tend to forget Japan were absolutely massive for a bit. Like, if you, if you go to the charity shops and uh, all the flea markets and things, uh, what you call it in the states, uh, there's there's just Japan everywhere. There, there, there's um, all the singles and, and lots of albums. You, you can find about three copies of this in any thrift shop, you know, uh, it's everywhere, but this, this is a really, really good album, they were, they were very, um, very, very ahead of their time, I think, I mean, uh, Ghost is an absolutely beautiful song, um, that's, that's probably my favourite Japan song, you know, Ghost, it's really, really, quite arty, very arty album, um, but that is very good, and they, they, they did very well for a long time, Japan, they were very popular, and very, very good as well, very underrated. Forgotten gem from the past, Japan Tin Drum. Listen to that. Uh, and I've, sorry, I mentioned this before. Depeche Mode's first album, very poppy, 1981, I think. Uh, 
very early Mute release, uh, Daniel Miller, uh, with his label. Um, Vince Clark uh, wrote all the songs on this, and uh, apart from Pick Two, maybe, I think Martin Gore wrote two songs on this. But um, he eventually left, and he, he for, originally formed, before he formed Erasure, uh, he was in Yazoo with uh, Alison Moyet. And this had uh, two huge singles on it, this had uh, Don't Go and Only You on it, which did ever so well. And it was, this is really quite a cutting edge for the time. I think, you remember when all these albums were released, you, if, if you play them, make sure you listen to them in context, remember how old they actually are. They really are, you know, 30, 30, 30 some of them 33, 34 years old. Very, very old albums now. And um, I think for the time, they probably sounded absolutely incredible when they came out. You know, um, I'd love to have been there when they first came out. But, uh, uh, I was chatting about uh, uh, orchestral maneuvers in the dark in my last video as well. I, I didn't, I didn't uh, mention this one. This is their last good album. This is the album that um, once all this synth pop stuff kicked off, they sort of cashed in because uh, they were sort of doing it before it was popular. And when, when they finally got around to releasing this, it was it was very nicely polished, very well paint um, style. And, um, it was absolutely massive souvenir Joan of Arc. I think we had three number ones on this, if I'm correct. Two of which are about Joan of Arc. So. Not all my cup of tea. I think Souvenir is an awfully sticky song. I do not like it at all. But it had, I, think, I do like Joan of Arc and Made of All Leagues. I think good tracks. But I think this, is the, this is the last good OMD album. They, they go a bit pants after this, unfortunately. So they've got about three good albums. The, the first one is the one I recommend. Uh, oh, it was also this is this is quite good if you like if you're interested in OMD. There is a, a very good greatest hits as well. Um, side one's got um, kind of all, all the all the nice singles off their first three records. On um, I'll give you a really good taste. The side two you can take it or leave it. It's got the later later stuff on. It was a bit, a bit pants, but that is a good record. Uh, and I'm also going to chat just a little briefly about craft work before I finish. Um, because like I say, there's a lot of stuff here where um, because it was since pop was becoming popular, a lot of bands who were doing electronic music before it was popular started becoming uh, more successful. And a, and a good example uh, is, is Kraftwerk. They, uh, the model was this, uh, wasn't a single off this album. It was a, a put on a B-side uh, of um, a single from their Computer World album, and that the B-side from this actually got to number one in the UK. I think it was 1983, which I thought was a very very well deserved uh, little nugget of success for Kraftwerk in the UK. Um, I think they're, they're definitely my favourite favourite band, Kraftwerk. They're absolutely fantastic. I'll, I'll think I will do a separate video about them uh, uh, soon. So there you go. That's my my little cherry pick of the the, the golden age of synth pop. There. I'm, I apologise for repeating myself a little bit. I, I, I have done things in a bit of a strange order. I think next time I'm I'm going to do probably um, I might redo the sort of post punk stuff that lead out the synth pop stuff, or, or I might do some American. Um, uh, post-punk stuff, late 70s stuff, like sort of talking heads and uh, suicide and that New York scene, and, um, D Devo, uh, some American uh, bands, I've done mainly British stuff until now. And also uh, also a, a crowd rock um, a one as well about the German music as well, because I, I love all that stuff. So I hope that wasn't too repetitive for you, bear, bear with me when the next video comes out and you can, you can watch them both uh, together, it will make more sense. So uh, thanks for watching, uh, leave me some comments.